Hey guys, this is Devin Adams. Uh, I am a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide. And in these videos, I've been uh, showing uh, how to set up your own NSC5 lab, which is also an NSC4 lab, which are the Fortinet certifications for the Fortinet Manager, Fortinet Analyzer, Fortinet Gates. And uh, I make these videos for my students just so they have a environment to play with so they can practice the lessons um, to get certified. And also, you know, to to test out things that you would normally not test out in production. Anyways, womp womp. Let's keep going. Uh, anyways, so I only had a short period of time when you're in GNS3 to drop these machines and the second you turn them on you get a 15 day license and that's how the free VMs work. So uh, it is not uncommon to essentially come back to your Ford manager and then log in using your super secret credentials. All right. If it even lets me do it. Here we go. And you'll get something like this. Maybe. I don't know why my, my system is going so slow, by the way, guys. Anyways. All right. So we go into our Ford Manager and it goes, you know what? Your VM license has expired. Please drop a VM license here to continue. And the only option is to hit OK or to log out. All right. So... Um, I've tried several different things to try to put the URL up here so we can at least gain access to maybe the uh, the GUI, um, even to do like a backup configuration, and unfortunately you can't. So, and that's where the limitation of 15 days is. So there are other limitations, so, and you'd have to go into the website to really see that, but Fortinet pretty much made sure that we would not use these in production by lowering the encryption levels and things like that, but that's okay. Uh, is there any way to kind of get around this? Well, that's what we're going to explore today. So uh, I'm not too sure if we can, right? But I have a theory, so let's go ahead and test it out. Because even though we cannot get to the GUI, we do have limited access to the CLI. So if we double-click this in GNS3, this is going to be like us having console access to the actual Forda manager. So if we do an admin and we do a password, we can get in. It says VM license is expired. We can do a get system stat just to kind of verify that, okay? And just to show you that we are using the, the free VMs here. So, um, okay, no big deal. Let's actually try to pull off the configuration file because I did not back up the config before it went, when expired. So, and let's see if we can't deploy another Forda Manager, restore the configuration, and get 15 more days. So uh, to do this, we're going to have to go into our Windows machine here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and download a FTP server. So because an FTP server is going to be required for us to get, um, to get the licensing off. So all right. We'll just let that load up here. Hopefully I have internet access. I think I turned on the FortiGates. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yay, we got internet access. So I'm just going to I'm just going to download an FTP server. I'm pretty sure FileZilla will come up. Well, look at that hot dog. And I know I could probably turn on the service in, in my Windows server, but I'm just being lazy. So here we go. And also, because this is a lab environment, and I really do not care about, um, about <laughs> which is funny, I don't care about security in my lab environment, um, I'm just going to temporarily disable my, um, my firewall, just because I don't want to fight the ports and open up the ports to get the FTP working, which it wouldn't be hard. But um, I'm just being lazy. So let's go ahead and go to our firewall and let's just shut that off. All right, see how it's connected to the domains. Now normally in, in a real environment, you'd take the time to punch through the, uh, the host base firewall to get FTP to work. but. Whatever. Thought I'd kill a little time there anyways. And I'll just minimize that while it's downloading. It looks like it has about 10 seconds to go. So, and then we'll get it installed and we'll try to get the configuration going. So, uh, let's see if we can't multitask while that's going to and just provision another 
40 manager. And this is what I love about GNS3. Once you get GNS3 set up, you need another 40 manager. All you need to do is grab it, drop it, boom, it's deployed. Brand new image. In fact, we can have that spitting up in the background while we're waiting. So, all right. And I'm pretty sure I could have just refreshed the option here too. I'm pretty sure there's a reload option here, but we'll have that we'll have that provisioning. So, all right, there we go. We have it downloaded. We're going to open it up. All right. How do you want to open this file? Ah, oh, don't tell me it's zipped. Oh man, life is so hard. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. I can already tell this is going to be a horrible video. I probably won't even upload it. Um, oh, that is weird. Why did it just come over as a file? I did download the right one, right? I swear that should have been an executable. All right, let's rename this bad boy. As I give myself a virus. That's okay. It's an isolated environment. All right, there we go. I have no idea why the... The exe dropped off of that file. I must have not been paying attention or something. Here we go. We're going to do I agree. We're going to go install. Sure, why not? Why not? Sure. And we'll install our FTP server. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go onto my Windows machine and just make a folder for the FTP to go to, that might be helpful, right? Come on. And once again, I'm doing this on a laptop that's about a thousand years old, so a lot of these VMs take a toll on old Betty here. So here we go, new folder, and I'll just call this FTP. All right, FTP. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, and our server is installed. Yay! And we can close out of there. So here we go, local host, it's fine. The IP address will be okay. We'll hit connect, all right? And there's a couple of things that we need to do. Now it detected a NAT router, that's fine, because we're actually not going out through the internet. We're doing this locally, right here to right here, okay? So we're going to go to uh, server, no, we're going to go to settings, all right, port 21 looks good, okay, now let's go to uh, users, and let's make a new one, and we'll just call this test, all right. And uh, sure, we'll do password, password, not too bad. And then with the shared folder, let's add that directory that we just created. All right, because we need somewhere for the configuration file to go. Okay, home, sounds good. We better make sure we give it read, write access to the test user, okay. We'll hit OK. There we go. And the IP address to this machine, I believe, and I'll double check it here, is 10.10.10.5, but I'm going to double check myself here by doing an IP config. All right, perfect. Let's get that configuration file. Are you guys ready? OK. Let's go to the Florida Managers CLI. All right, and we're going to get an execute back up. And you can hit question mark here to kind of step your way through this. It's not too hard to kind of, you know, work yourself through here. Settings. All right, FTP. IP port, so it's going to be 10, 10, 10, 5, colon 21. All right, the path is going to be the root, and the file name is going to be backup.dat. Then we need a username, which is test, and then a password, which is password, don't tell anyone. There we go.
All right. Starting back up, all settings and background, please wait. To confirm that everything's working, we're going to hop back onto our Windows machine, and we should see some activity eventually happening here. Now, it's not going to happen right away, at least I'm assuming it's not, because it has to get that backup file ready. Oh, and there it is. And now it's pushing down the backup file. All right, so as you can see, it's about 93 megs which is about right and let's actually let's actually see if this worked all right so let's see if we can't configure it and pick up right where we left off and get and get 15 more days so um, I'm gonna hover over my Forta manager and it should be port 1 that is plugged into all right and I am going to delete that move it off to the side move this bad boy in here hook up port 1 alright there we go and we're just going to let that post so I'm gonna hit pause right here because you guys don't obviously need to watch the paint dry so just a moment alright there we go now this is a brand new Forta manager that's just dropped right into our GNS3 so we're gonna log in with admin no password and get a git system status just to show that the license is valid for another 15 days now we have the FTP server already running and there's something that we need to um, to mention here so this is a database file our config file is a database file it is not like a running configuration file like on the FortiGates so we just put in a new machine so we are going to need to do a special step in order to get all of our devices back into this new Forta Manager. And this is the same process that you would do if you provisioned a new Forta Manager. And that is an execute migrate. So the execute migrate will go ahead and pull over the databases without affecting the new device that's in question. Okay, so um, that's kind of the the missing piece here because if you just try to log into the GUI and drop the configuration file it's simply not going to work so um, you're gonna get it, it might take the configuration but you might run into some problems so once again this is gonna import the uh, device settings and everything that had to do with our managed devices but keep the new FortiGate the way that it is alright so I'm gonna do a uh, execute actually it's brand new so I have to do a config system interface and edit that port 1 and give it the old IP address set IP of 10 let's see here oops 10.10.10.250 slash 24 all right and now we can do an execute migrate and once again you can just hit the question mark to walk your way through it all right, FTP, oops, I hit enter, and it's going to be 10.10.10.5, all right, port 21, and then the file name is going to be backup.dat, I believe we called it, and it's going to be test and password. It's going to give you a warning, you got to make sure that they're identical, so on and so forth, we're going to say yes and then it finds the, the file so there we go and once this happens it will take the configuration and it will reboot it and uh, the admin settings and the host name and everything we're gonna have to set those again alright but everything else should still be able to come through so um, if everything works out right we'll have our our devices and we'll still get 15 more days to manage it so all right, I'm going to hit pause just so you can uh, not watch it load here. So just a moment. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and do an admin. All right, get system stats. Okay, let's log in through the GUI. So, all right, here we go. So I'm just going to go to my PC1 here and kind of hit the refresh button. Bloop. There we are. Let's go ahead and accept the. I know it's not trusted. 
here we go all right so let's go ahead and log in admin now once again it just did the database files that's why it's asking me for a new admin password all right here we go do, 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 do. and as you can see it pulled in the 40 analyzer and our device manager see all of our devices now it says out of sync obviously because uh, our devices are shut off here but as you can see we have all of our devices okay and most importantly if I go to my dashboard we now have a valid license so uh, once again guys this was just a quick video to show you how you can get more uh, out of your licensing okay so it works the same way with the 40 analyzer now with the 40 analyzer though just make sure that you are also backing up the log files and things like that so I'm not even sure if it would format the logs I think the logs would be just fine the way that they are I'm gonna have to try it out um, once that license expires but uh, pretty darn cool though right guys so alright see how we have 14 more days and hopefully someone found that helpful, and that way you can just get a little bit more mileage out of your out of your NSC5 lab once you set it up. So, and uh, yeah, just remember to do that migration instead of just dropping the configuration, and you should be fine, and you should have 15 more days to play with it. So, the FortiGates are a lot easier, by the way, because they are running configuration files. You just need to drop the configs on those to make those work. So, but the Forti Analyzer and the Forti Manager, because they are using those database files, just remember, you do have to have the FTP servers and you do have to do that extra step of migration. So, all right, guys, I uh, hope someone found that helpful. And, uh, yeah, until next time, see you later.